Hello! Here, we usually talk about biological cells that make up living things and the microbes that sometimes infect them. We usually talk about these two topics in the Gekoyo language of Central Kenya. I do this to learn how to speak my mother tongue better and also to increase dialogue of science topics in African mother tongues. One thing about Kenyan culture that I was reflecting on the other day was that religion is a really big part of the way that people live their lives in Kenya and in the Kenyan diaspora. During COVID lockdown, I was part of a team based in Kenya and I remember being surprised when weekly meetings started with prayers. I've noticed more audience members from Kenya, and I was wondering what y'all think about the relationship between religion and science. I would love to hear from you today if you're comfortable, as I'm always interested to think and hear and discuss these type of topics. I want you to feel free to do the same on this platform. So, today's video is a short reflection on why, in my view, these two subjects give us two different types of tools to understand our world. In experimental science, we use various techniques to help us understand the behavior of molecules and natural phenomena. These experiments are typically well-defined, and most importantly, the experimental outcome has to be clearly interpretable. As an example, let's look at one technique from the field of molecular biology. This is called an agarose gel. And one way that you can use it is to separate out DNA molecules based on their size. It is made from a type of sugar which makes pores or small holes. What you do is you put this gel in the presence of an electric current that helps the DNA move in one direction based on its charge. Large fragments take longer to go through the pores and small fragments go faster. And in this way, differences in migration rate are related to the size of the fragment. So in this picture, I want to draw your attention to what the arrow is pointing at. What the arrow is pointing at is what we call a DNA ladder. This is a sample that contains many DNA fragments of different lengths. You typically buy this from the science supply store, and when you run it on your gel, you can use the different predetermined size markers to help you figure out how big your sample size is. And now, the arrow is pointing at two different experimental samples. From this technique, you can get information about how big your DNA fragment sample is by comparing it to the predetermined size on the ladder. This method can also be useful to look at the amount of DNA in a sample. And you are able to see it with your eyes because the experimentalist typically has added a dye that when exposed to a certain wavelength of light, releases visible light so that the camera that took this picture can image it. So what is the point of this example? What I want to do is to show you an example of a measurement technique that visualizes a specific biological component and which can be measured and analyzed. A foundation of scientific work is based on making observations and then testing your understanding of those observations in ways that are measurable. You typically develop a hypothesis and then design an experiment that will either support or negate your hypothesis. Now, an important part of this process is the technique that you use to answer your questions. The limits of your technique of choice have to be well established so that you can be sure what you are measuring and so that you can interpret your findings with confidence. And so, in this example, in order to measure the length of this piece of DNA using this method, some of the limits are the fact that it has to be within a measurable size as defined by the ladder, and that it has to be enough in quantity so that the visualizing dye can bind to it and allow for its imaging. Experimental techniques like in the example that I have shown you, have boundaries and limits. Metaphysical questions, like the existence of God, typically are outside the limits of most experimental approaches. So, in the same way that you might have to switch to a different technique when you're at the bound of an experimental measurement, perhaps religion and the way that humans have thought about religion and spirituality is one such adjustment to help us understand the idea of a god or creator of this world. Ultimately, I think that scientific inquiry and the knowledge that we get through scientific approaches 
are a powerful way to see and understand the world that we live in. And the world of religion and spirituality might be one way to help us understand our place in it. So I think of them as two different types of tools for helping us to understand the world that we live in. What do you think of the relationship between science and religion? Do you think that there is a conflict? Thank you for taking time to listen to me today. I hope you will take some time to listen to some of the other videos on this platform. Take care of yourself and those around you. Bye!